Hi there. In, the, in this quick session, I'm going to show you how to use uh, tangents for determining uh, the gradient of a curve. And you'll need to do that when you want to determine the rate of certain enzyme controlled reactions. So we'll begin with this example. Um, it involves a scientist investigating the hydrolysis of starch. So starch being hydrolyzed into maltose by the enzyme amylase. Uh, <clears throat> he, uh, he recorded the concentration of the maltose produced at regular time intervals, and then this curve uh, was plotted afterwards. In the question, it says to determine the rate of the reaction at 10 minutes. Now, whenever we see this, uh, this instruction in a question uh, to determine the rate at a particular time, that means that we need to draw a tangent on the uh, on the curve because we want to know what the uh, what the gradient of the curve is at this particular time at 10 minutes. So let's have a look at this one uh, to begin with. Uh, to draw your tangent, you'll need a ruler. Uh, ideally, a uh, nice sharp pencil, uh, and then follow these instructions. So, firstly, read from the x-axis. On the x-axis, we have the time. On the y-axis, we have the, uh, the concentration of the maltose, i.e. the product being formed. And then we read up from 10 minutes to determine the rate at that point. Read up to the curve and then you want to draw the curve so that it is, or, or draw your tangent so that it matches the gradient of the curve. So to do that, move your ruler around until you think you've uh, got an even uh, uh, even angle either side of the curve. I'm going to draw mine about, where are we? about there. Okay, then you can extend your tangent line right the way to the uh, to the axes, and the y-axis, and then right at the top of the scale on the uh, on the y-axis there as well. The reason I do that uh, is it will make the determining the uh, the gradient of that line much easier. Okay, so to determine the gradient, we need to know the change in uh, in y divided by the change in x. Now to do that we need to determine what the uh, the final concentration is which we refer to as y2 minus the initial concentration y1 divided by uh, the final time so x2 minus the initial time x1. So let's have a look at the uh, at the scales then. If we uh, begin with uh, y1 down here, so this is the initial uh, concentration. If we read from the x-axis, we can see that y1 equals, uh, let's say, 1, 2, 5. The maximum there has gone right up the top of the scale, so we can say that y2 is 300. So for determining the change in y, it's, or the difference in y, 300 minus 125, or 175. Okay, divided by the change in the x. So the final uh, time, if we have a look at uh, the final time, we can read off the scale there, so 15, perhaps, um, 17.5 there for the uh, the final time x2 and then the initial time is nice and easy because we're going from the uh, from the origin so the initial time y1 x1 sorry is 0 0.0 so 17.5 minus 0 gives us 
at 17.5. You probably already predict what this is. You will, you may need to use a calculator in other circumstances, but you probably already predicted that this is a 10.0. Okay, so uh, often you will be given a, a bit of a range between um, two values. Uh, as long as you demonstrate the correct method for determining the uh, each of these values, and as long as your tangent line is, is close to the true gradient at that particular point, you'll get the mark. So 10.0, I think, is within the, uh, the tolerance there. Typically, these questions will be followed with uh, an explanation of the uh, results shown in the graph. And in this uh, graph, we can see that uh, the increase in the or the rate of increase in the amount of glucose being produced uh, slows as the substrate or as the starch is hydrolyzed or used up. Eventually, we'll reach a point when the uh, when the curve plateaus completely. So perhaps after 25 minutes, we could say it's plateaued, and that is because all of the starch has been all of that starch has been hydrolyzed down into maltose. Okay, so that's one example. Let's have a look at another one. In this, uh, a student is investigating the effect of lipase on the uh, hydrolysis of lipids. He took a beaker containing a suspension of lipids, placed a pH probe attached to a data logger. After five minutes, added the lipase solution and the data logger recorded the pH. Now you'll probably realise that the hydrolysis of lipids uh, produces uh, glycerol, but also fatty acids. And it's those fatty acids which will lower the pH, and this is what's being measured <coughs> excuse me, uh, uh, in this investigation. So if we have a look at the... Excuse me, look at the question here. Um, draw a tangent on the graph and use it to calculate the rate of change again at five minutes. So if we know, if it says at, it means we need to draw a tangent. Actually, it already tells you that in this question, but this is what we're looking for. So reading up from five minutes, we can get to this point on our curve. And if we draw a tangent that matches that, I think it's somewhere, I would say, about there. Okay, so right the way across the axes again. And we sort of follow that same method. So y2 minus y1, so the, um, the final uh, pH minus the initial pH. Uh, and then the final time, x2 minus x1. So if we have a look at the graph then, so our uh, y1 in this example, well that's 4 because we've gone right down to the axes there, and y2 is 6.5. For the time on the x-axis, so the initial time, x1 is 0, and I would say that's 7.4. So x2, 7.4. <coughs> so 6.5 minus 4, 0, over 7.4 minus 0, or 2.5 divided by 7.4. Can't do that one in my head. Okay, it gives us 0.3378, which um, in all cases you can round to uh, 0 0.3. Four. Two decimal places will always be enough there.
Okay, again, this question is followed by explain the results shown in the graph. So we've already said that the hydrolysis of lipids will involve the production of fatty acids. So to explain the results, uh, we've got the uh, fatty acids being produced. Sorry, I've just remembered something. Because this is a, uh, a negative change, we should show on the, uh, on the rate of change there that it's minus 3, 4 uh, in pH per minute. It's decreasing, so that's a, a negative value. Okay, so those fatty acids are produced. We can see that decrease in the pH. And then eventually, perhaps after uh, eight minutes, there is a plateau. And that plateau tells us that all of the lipids, the substrates uh, here, have been hydrolyzed down into glycerol and fatty acids. So there is no further change at that point. OK, one final example. And this one is a little bit more complicated because it involves uh, the calculation of two uh, tangents and, then, uh, and using then those tangents to determine a ratio. So here we can see two, uh, and technicians investigated the effect of temperature on the rate of enzyme controlled reaction. At each temperature, he started the reaction using the same concentration of the substrate. The graph shows his results. So draw a tangent to find the initial rates. OK, to do that, to find the initial rates, we want to know what the, uh, the, uh, the gradient is close to the very start of the reaction. And that will obviously be the highest rate of the reaction, because that is when the concentration of the substrate is greatest. OK, so uh, we're going to do that for both curves. For uh, the curve at 60 degrees, we start from the origin, up to there. So, uh, for 60 degrees, and in fact for 37 degrees for both of these, uh, Y1 It's going to equal zero because we're starting at the initial rate for both of y1 will always be zero. For uh, 60 degrees, 60 degrees Celsius, y2 is going to be equal to uh, 15. Okay, that maximum uh, concentration of the product. For 60 degrees, uh, x2, that final time is three, three minutes, and the initial time for both, so 60 and 37, the initial time is going to equal zero as well. Now, this perhaps with 37 is slightly trickier because there is a uh, there's a more pronounced curve for 37, so uh, you can follow that. But I think try to make the, uh, if it's asking for the initial, you need to try to make that the same as the initial rate, which perhaps is that. OK, so x1 for 37 is 0, x2, sorry, x2 for 37 is perhaps 15.5 minutes. Uh, Y2 for 37 is going to be the same, and Y1 will be the same. OK, so uh, following that same uh, calculation we did earlier on, so Y2 minus Y1 
So you'll need to do this for both curves. So for 37 degrees Celsius, 